Now that we've looked at some basics, let's take a look at arrays. So you're probably thinking, wait a minute, why arrays? Well, if you already know arrays, you know that they have some structure. Arrays store data. They have some kind of defined behavior, and it's good for certain purposes. So an array is really a data structure when we get down to it. It's a pretty simple data structure, but it is a data structure nonetheless, and one that we can use pretty effectively. Uh, Arrays have a lot of good purposes. You know, you can access the elements pretty quickly. It actually is constant time to access any element in an array. Uh, it's easy to update the values. Updating a value is constant time as well. And they use exactly as much space as they need. You know, when we build an array, we, we allocate a certain number of values to it. So an array really is as big as we want it to be and, and no bigger, uh, which is kind of a good feature of arrays. They don't waste a lot of space. But when it comes down to it, arrays have some challenges. One is that arrays are as big as they're supposed to be. So if we create an array that has 100 slots and we have to use 101, well, we have to expand the size of it. We have to actually create a whole new array. We have to copy all of the old values in it, and we have to put it into the new array. So this is going to be big O of n. Is it's going to depend on the number of values that you have to copy, uh, the size of the array, big O of n here, to, to duplicate that array that's a little bit bigger. So that's a little bit of a challenge. It can also be hard to tell if we care about all of the elements in an array. They may contain data. They may be in positions that aren't being used anymore or yet. You know, an array's length only tells you how big the capacity of the array is, not how many things we need to put into it, you know, or not how many things or positions are currently being used. So that's a little bit of a limitation. So let's get into caps encapsulation. Encapsulation is probably a concept you might have learned already. Basically, encapsulation is when we take the complexity and, and data that we have in an object and we kind of hide it inside and control access to only what a user needs. Uh, we want to take all of the things we don't want a user to know about or don't, have, don't want a user to have access to, and we encapsulate those inside the object. And then we really provide the user of the object more safe means to, to actually manipulate that object. Encapsulation is useful because it gives us control over how the data is stored and what the user can do. It gives us the ability to kind of control exactly what we're going to do to our data. We can provide access to our data, but not necessarily give the user the way that it's stored because we may have rules we want to define or we may have behaviors we want to define on how that's actually done. So it allows us to abstract these complex behaviors inside of the object which and provide these simpler methods for accessing which is really useful because you know the user often doesn't want to be burdened with the details of how every single operation happens. You know that's why we have functions and objects because they allow us to have a label or some kind of stand-in for some behavior instead of having to write that behavior out over and over again. It gives us the ability to reuse, but it also gives us the ability to abstract all of that complex behavior into a single name of a function or an object. So we can encapsulate a basic array into a simple object with just a few methods. We could get values from a particular index. We could set values to a, uh, at a particular index to some particular thing. And we could retrieve the size of the array that we've actually uh, used so far. Uh, so this gives us some ability to encapsulate the array, but we might also want to add to the array. So right now, if we want to fill in arrays, we have to keep track of the position that, we, that we're using. We have to keep track of where the next data goes. So we also have to decide like what happens when we, add, when we are out of space in our array. Let's say we allocate an array of 10 values, and we put 10 things into it. Do we allow somebody to put in an 11th thing? What do we do and how are we going to handle that complexity? So encapsulation and abstraction allow us to hide all of these decisions so the user doesn't even have to think about them. So this is what brings us to dynamic arrays. A plain old array is going to allow us to allocate a certain amount of values and keep it at that particular number of values. Uh, if, we want to, if we want to expand it, we have to do all of this manual work. But the idea behind a dynamic array is that all of that work is going to happen automatically without even having to think about it. Somebody's already written that code for us. So dynamic arrays, sometimes you'll hear them called array lists or vectors or just lists. Uh, they allow us to use 
the simplicity of arrays, the real power of the array, getting that big O of constant time access and big O of constant time setting of values, while still providing expansion so that they're not limited by a particular size. So the add operation can take a look at the in, inner data and it can say, all right, do we need to copy or do we not need to copy? Most of the time, we're, we're not going to need to copy and expand the size of an array, but the user doesn't have to think about that. The user can just add things to this array. So if you've used an array list in Java or you've used a list in Python, Python, uh, or you've used vectors in C++, you've kind of already handled this. You've already dealt with the fact that this is happening, but you don't really think about whether or not it's happening. So the other thing is that we, it allows us to control when we try to do the expansion. So we don't want to expand this array every single time somebody adds to it. Uh, we probably want to keep some kind of counter inside the object so that we know where the next value should go. Uh, you know, if we created an array that was one, and then we copied everything over and it was two and then we copied everything over and it was three and we copied again and so on and so on. That would really give us bad performance. Our add method would be remarkably low performance. So we, we don't want that. So we can also provide remove operations and insert operations. But each one of these is going to be harder because we're dealing with an array here. So we don't want to have empty space we can't just remove a value and then have everything else kind of where it is because that space is still going to be there that index is still going to be there so remove is going to force us to move everything around if we remove the first item in our array we have to move everything else in the array to fill that space so we have to actually copy every single value in the array we also could insert but we have to do it the other way if we want to insert in the first space we have to move everything one position down so if we think about the things we can do here we can retrieve a value at a particular index that's still going to be constant time. We can set a value at a particular index and that's still going to be constant time. We can add a value and that's typically going to be constant time. Now it's going to be big O of n sometimes but if our array is large enough and the amount of data that we have to deal with is large enough it's going to be big O of n so little that it's probably not going to matter that much. You know if you have a thousand values and you double the size to two thousand then one out of those 1,000 ads, you're going to have a big O of n, but you know, the other 999 are going to be constant time. So it's really not that bad when we stop and think about it. You know, it's not really adding a whole lot of overhead. Uh, we insert, so this is going to have to be big O of n. If we insert something in the beginning, we have to move everything one position down in our array to make room for it. Just like remove is going to have to be big O of n, because we're going to have to remove things and then move everything into their places. So Insert and remove are nice capabilities. They are nice ways to abstract all of that effort that you would have to do if you were using a plain old array, but they are costly. You know, if we have to insert or remove something over and over again, that's going to show up in our performance. So an important thing we want to consider as a trade-off of this is how do we decide when to expand the size of our array? Uh, what's the right rate of expansion here? You know, if we expand too aggressively, we can waste a lot of memory. In that example I just mentioned, if we're doubling from 1,000 to 2,000, but we only add 1,002 things to our array, well, we've wasted 998 spaces in memory, which isn't great. You know, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not great to waste memory, especially considering that you have a lot of programs running on your computer or running on your phone. Uh, wasting a lot of memory could be really costly. So we could do this a couple of ways. We could expand very quickly and potentially waste memory but make our add operation very fast. Or we could expand very slowly and not waste much memory but make our add operation a bit slower in the process. So we could also allow the user to specify this. When we actually build a dynamic array, we could identify the rate of expansion with uh, the constructor providing the user an ability to set that. So maybe we want to expand at a rate of you know 2x every time we need to expand. Maybe we want to expand at a rate of 1 0.5x, maybe that's more appropriate. But if we give the, the user that capability, then we can probably provide a lot of functionality this way without having to think too hard about this particular solution. It's always a good strategy, you know, when we're not 100% sure of what's going to be appropriate in every situation to think about how you can provide the user that control. So we talked a little bit about arrays here. We talked a little bit about encapsulation and how we can take a bunch of complexity and hide it away using abstraction. So encapsulation allows us to hide our data and allows us to provide access to only what the, we want the user to access. Not because we don't trust the user, but you know the user may not know exactly what the rules are with manipulating our data. So encapsulation allows us to prevent that. And abstraction allows us to kind of take those complicated ideas and put them behind a single name. And then we talked about dynamic arrays or linked 
list, or I'm sorry, linked lists are a different topic altogether that we'll get into. Uh, dynamic arrays or vectors or array lists or just lists. Uh, and you can see those in a lot of different languages. You've probably already used them yourself. So in the next couple of lectures, we're going to talk some more about some basic data structures. But for now, thanks for listening.